Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. PM Modi reviews preparedness as India steps up COVID surveillance. We have no future, say students after Taliban bans Afghan women from universities. Nepal's Supreme Court orders release of serial killer Charles Shobrat. And now for all the details. Indian PM Modi on Thursday held a meeting to review the COVID-19 situation in the country as authorities have stepped up surveillance amidst rising cases in some countries, including neighboring China. India's health minister said, as part of the measures, random testing of 2% of all international passengers arriving at airports has started, while a close watch is being kept on emergence of any new variants. India has started randomly testing 2% of all international passengers arriving at its airports for COVID-19, the country's health minister Mansukh Mandavia told the parliament on Thursday. Citing an increase in COVID-19 cases in China and other parts of the globe, Mandavia said all state authorities have been asked to keep a sharp lookout for any new variants, as he urged people to wear masks in crowded areas to fight the enemy COVID-19 virus. Globally, some 3.5 million cases are being recorded every week. The spike is being blamed on the new Omicron sub-variant BF.7. वैश्विक महामारी अभी पूरी तरह से खत्म नहीं हुई है और हमें कोविड वैक्सीन का प्रिकॉशन डोज लगाने के उपरांत सभी को सतर्क रहकर कोविड प्रोटोकॉल का प्लान पालन करना चाहिए हमारे दुश्मन कोविड वायरस समय समय पर अपना स्वरूप बदल रहा है इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी आल्सो हेल्ड अ हाई लेवल मीटिंग विद ऑफिशियल्स एंड एक्सपर्ट्स ऑन थर्सडे टू रिव्यू द कोविड-19 सिचुएशन इन द कंट्री with more than 44 million COVID-19 cases to date, India has reported the most in the world after the United States. However, its number of confirmed infections has fallen sharply in the past few months. The country of nearly 1.4 billion people has administered more than 2.2 billion COVID vaccine doses. Smoky haze and thick fog persisted in India's capital New Delhi and other regions of northern India on Thursday. The air quality index also remained in very poor category in the city, with parents expressing fear about effects on their children, calling themselves helpless amidst the situation. A report. Smoky haze and thick fog persisted in national capital New Delhi and other parts of northern India on Thursday amid wintry temperatures, ensnaring traffic and raising fears for the health of school children. The city's air quality index was at 141 on Thursday in the very poor category as per data by the system of air quality and weather forecasting and research. Parents expressed fear for their wards being exposed to pollutants, terming themselves helpless in such a situation. They blame the government is not taking enough measures to tackle pollution. Yes, I'm very much worried because the pollution levels have gone up really bad and it's just that we are helpless because even the Delhi government is not taking any actions. They are not doing enough, I mean they are not taking enough measures to curb the pollution levels. All I see is that, you know, uh, you, know you, you also must have seen while traveling on the road, there's a sprinkler, you know, which sprinkles the water droplets on the streets. But that's not sufficient. In past, several measures such as occasional suspension of construction activities and restrictions on diesel vehicles have been implemented to improve the city's air quality. But experts have said that these measures need to be applied across northern India, which also suffers from poor air quality to effectively control pollution. 
मूविंग ऑन पाकिस्तान फॉरन मिनिस्टर बिलावल भुट्टो जरदारी ऑन थर्सडे टर्म्ड तहरीक तालिबान पाकिस्तान मिलिटेंट ग्रुप एज अ रेड लाइन फॉर पाकिस्तान स्पीकिंग टू रिपोर्टर्स बिलावल सेड इफ अफगानिस्तान रूलर सपोर्ट द बैंड आउटफिट इन एनी फॉर्म और फेल टू टेक एक्शन अगेंस्ट दैम इट कुड अफेक्ट रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Thursday said Afghan Taliban has been told Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan or TTP militant group is red line for his country adding it could impact relations of Pakistan and Afghanistan Bilawal who is on a tour of the United States made the remarks while speaking to media at the Pakistan embassy he said we will not ignore if we found out that Taliban are not stopping TTP TTP or the Pakistan Taliban is not directly related to Taliban but pledges allegiance to them. He also asked the US for releasing the frozen funds of Afghanistan, adding if Afghanistan's banking system and funds are not revived, it could lead to 90% of population entering poverty and the country becoming a recruitment ground for different terror outfits. <laughs> Bilawal's remarks came after Pakistan's army claimed this week they gunned down at least 25 TTP militants. Hold up in a counter terrorism center in Bannu city while one hostage and two commandos died in the operation to retake the compound the ttp has ramped up attacks in pakistan in recent weeks since announcing the end of an afghan taliban brokered ceasefire with the islamabad last month in news from afghanistan female university students in afghanistan have expressed they are shattered after the taliban's decision this week to bar women from pursuing university education the move has drawn widespread condemnation from foreign governments and the united nations a protest was held outside the nangarhar university in the eastern city of jalalabad on wednesday after the taliban run administration in afghanistan said women would be suspended from university education female students complained they were turned away at the gates after the tuesday's announcement by the taliban run higher education ministry the move has drawn widespread condemnation from foreign governments and the united nations a university student in capital kabul said she now feels girls have no future in the country as their right to education has been snatched another student said she tore up all her notebooks when she heard the news بله وقت که ما صبح این خبر را شنیدم واقعا زیاد جگر خون شدم بسیار زیاد ناراحت بودم اصلا بسیار تو فکرم فراگنده بود به اینکه ما دیگه اصلا حق تحصیل نداریم حق تحصیل یک حق مسلم است که برای هر مرد و زن فرض است که باید کلگی یک قص که کس از ما گرفته نمیتونه یک بار از این خبر را باشم واقعا یک حس بد داشتم تمام ورقه های خود پاره کردم گفتم از لنی زندگی نیست مور به درس نمیمونن د پنتون نمیمونه مکتب نمیمونه حالا ما مدبم که ثبت نام کنم اما اجازه نمیتن دیگه واقعا یک حس بد دارم که اصلا ابراز کردن نمیتون کس مرا احساس درک کردن نمیتون The United Nations has asked the Taliban run administration to immediately revoke the decision urging authorities to also reopen girls schools beyond the 6th grade and end all measures preventing women and girls from participating fully in daily public life the latest move to bar women students is likely to complicate the taliban's efforts to gain international recognition and to get rid of sanctions that are severely hampering the economy several taliban officials have spoken out in favor of female education in recent months However the supreme taliban spiritual leader based in kandahar has the final say on major decisions More on news from Afghanistan The Taliban run Ministry of Public Health conducted a 3 day anti polio vaccination campaign this week aimed to cover around 7 million children under the age of 5 
The crippling disease has been virtually eradicated worldwide, but Afghanistan and Pakistan are the only two countries where polio remains endemic. Afghanistan's Ministry of Public Health conducted a three-day campaign to vaccinate 7 million children under the age of five against polio this week. Afghanistan, according to a statement by the Taliban-run health ministry, is nearing to become a polio-free country as so far this year only two cases have been registered against four cases in 2021. Dr. Sharafat Zaman Amar, a health ministry spokesperson, said this year around eight polio vaccination campaigns have been conducted, six of which were national and two local in high-risk zones. The latest drive, which concluded on Wednesday, covered 26 out of the country's 34 provinces. The crippling disease has been virtually eradicated worldwide, but Afghanistan and Pakistan are the only two countries where polio remains endemic due to reasons including inaccessible terrain and suspicion of outside interference. In news from Nepal, Charles Sobraj, a convicted killer who police suspect was responsible for a string of murders across Asia in the 1970s and 80s, is set to walk free after Nepal's Supreme Court ordered his release owing to his age and health. Charles, who was held in a high-security jail in Kathmandu since 2003, was also suspected of killing two foreign nationals in the Himalayan nation. Charles Sobraj, a convicted killer who police suspect was responsible for a string of murders in the 1970s and 80s, is set to walk free after nearly 20 years in prison in Nepal. The apex court of the Himalayan nation ordered his release owing to his health and age on Wednesday. 78-year-old Sobraj, a French national, is suspected of killing more than 20 Western backpackers across Asia, usually by drugging their food or drink in the course of robbing them. He had been held in a high-security jail in Kathmandu since 2003 when he was arrested on charges of murdering American traveller Connie J. Bronjic and her Canadian friend Lauren Carriere. However, he denies killing them and claims charges against him are based on assumption. According to our law, which is basically Prison Rules 1963, Rule number 29-2A, it provides that any prisoner above the age of 65 with good conduct during the jail term can be given up to 75% discount in the prison sentence. So if this provision was applied earlier, he could have been released some six years ago. Sopraj was born to an Indian father and Vietnamese mother. He was also known as the serpent because of his ability to disguise himself following his escape from a prison in India in the mid-1980s where he was sentenced to 21 years imprisonment for murders. He was later caught and jailed in India until 1997 when he returned to France. In a unique household in India, 13 members of a family sleep in one state and go to another state for dinner. The house of two brothers, Uttam and Chandra Pawar, is divided by chalk mark as it falls under two states, Maharashtra and Telangana. Have a look. In a unique household in India, 13 members of Pawar family sleep in one state and go to another state for dinner. The house of two brothers, Uttam Pawar and Chandra Pawar, stands along the border of Indian states of Maharashtra and Telangana in Chandrapur district. The Pawar family has been living in this 10-room house, which is separated by a chalk line among the two neighbouring states. Uttam Pawar said they pay taxes to village council of both states, adding the schemes of Telangana state provides the family more benefit. <laughs> जब हम दोनों भाई एक जगह थे अब डिवाइडेड हो गए तो चार रूम बड़े भाई के तेलंगाना में बता रहे और चार रूम मेरे महाराष्ट्र में बता रहे मेरा जो किचन रूम है वो तेलंगाना में बता रहे सर इन 1969 व्हेन द डिस्प्यूट ऑन द बॉर्डर इशू बिटवीन द टू स्टेट्स वाज फिक्स्ड द पवार फैमिलीज लैंड वाज डिवाइडेड बिटवीन द टू स्टेट्स द हाउस वेयर द फैमिली रिसाइड्स वाज आल्सो डिवाइडेड the neighbouring states of Telangana and Maharashtra are in loggerhead over 14 such villages. 
in Chandrapur district. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.